Hi, I'm Oded and I'm a software architect for the Wix Infrastructure Group. I'm Avi and I'm a principal infrastructure engineer in the Wix Backend Guild. Today we're going to talk about really interesting topic, all about data modeling. Uh, so let's see what we've done so far. Um, we got the requirements for the product. Uh, no. We have de we have designed the API. We uh, de we decided that we want to use microservice architecture, which means that we had to split our our, uh, our domain. I mean, we had to identify and split our domains. Uh, domain discovery, yeah. Okay, and now there's one kind of important aspect that we did not discuss, which is data engineering. Uh, how do I save my data in a way that can support my requirements? So definitely, data engineering big big part of doing uh, backend engineering, basically every backend developer needs to have the scale in this uh, data modeling scale in this toolkit. Um, a word about mono monolithic, monolithic approach of microservices, when we work with monolith, usually the CDO, the chief architect, chose at the beginning of the road a given database where it was like MS SQL or Postgres or Oracle and then for the next 10 years, all developers in the comp within the company use that. And loved it, right? And, and they didn't have any choice. So <laughs> they, they had to learn it, they had to tweak it to their needs and stuff. But now when you have like small services, so I think every modern uh, software organization has multiple databases and developers constantly coming with uh, offers about using another database, especially in the, la in the last 10 years when tons of generation two and generation three databases came up. So it's like MongoDB, DynamoDB, Firebase, and, and, and Couchbase and more. So basically when I'm looking about, when I'm designing a service in the same manner we designed the API, I'm trying to model my data correctly. So I'm also once again thinking about my access patterns, thinking about my read patterns, thinking about my update patterns, etc. So when I'm looking about a new service I'm implementing, a new domain, so obviously it gets affected for my domain discovery. I know which data I need to save. I have kind of a grasp idea of how do I want to save it, but then I'm starting to ask myself a few permanent questions that I have. First question is like whether I need the atomicity. Like when we talk about databases, a lot of time we're talking about the ACID uh, principles, which is uh, atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. So I'm thinking about, does I, do I need transaction? If I'm doing a payment service, I probably need transactions, right? But if I'm just saving data and I can be more tolerant, maybe I can, uh, maybe I can sacrifice uh, um, transactions. Would I want to avoid it in, the, in general, transactions? Yeah, transaction usually has a cost, but it's not like what we did when we started microservices and you have like patterns like two-faces commit between databases, which was like really, really extensive or distribute uh, transaction, really extensive. But transaction within a single domain, it might be okay, unless you have like a really, really big scale. Um, so I, when I'm looking at a database, I'm looking whether it's, it's the transaction, do I need high level of consistency or stuff, what the scale I'm going to, to have in my system, what's the ease of use. A lot of time I'm hiring like a five, five uh, backend developers. I have five of them know completely my SQL, so I probably choose my SQL over Postgres. And sometimes uh, I have developers who know like uh, no SQL database better. It's not only about pure technology, it's also about people and what they have, right? Because I, I don't think you ever heard about a company that says like, we failed because we used SQL, or we failed because we used Java. It's never the case, right? No. So even, I'm, so I'm looking at my team as a team, it's like, like managers looking at sports team. I'm looking about how many, like my developers are proficient in something. Yet another consideration I have to make is the operations. I have DBAs, database administrators within my company. I need to know how familiar with every database technology whether I can go to a managed solution by, Arc by Amazon, something like RDS, whether I need to deploy on-prem. So all of this, all of this are like consideration I'm making when I'm choosing a database. Um, and well, actually there's a lot of things, I guess. We wouldn't want every, every team to develop something and like a new service would have to go all, uh, through all these decisions, right? Exactly, so exactly like you spoke about before when you talk about if whether we're like doing a polyglot or a duoglot. So basically we're doing microservices, but 99% of our services are Scala and Node.js, right? So here it's the same thing. We are choosing basically like one RDBMS stack, one NoSQL document solution, and maybe like a search, in the search uh, solution, but that's it. So we're using mostly in Wix, we're using MySQL. Right, that, that, that is very good. This is like the main three groups. And then yeah. within, I mean, it's not that. You, you can do practically everything with MySQL, let's say MongoDB in the document category, and maybe Elasticsearch or Vespa in the full text search index uh, 
stuff or solar, you know? Right, but it's not worth to, it's not wrong to use Oracle, for example. If yeah, this is what you, if this is what you need, if this is what your people know, it, 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 it's, a, it's definitely. A I never I never seen an organization or software project fail of choosing Oracle over Postgres. I never seen it yet. Um, so basically, but once I have those requirements, when I'm looking about modern architecture and modern modern service design and software design, like you said, the data engineering, I think. The biggest question I'm, I'm facing when I'm implementing a new service is whether I want to normalize my data or denormalize my data. When speaking about norm normalized data, we're speaking, we're often referring to multiple tables in an RDBMS relational base, right? Which have multiple tables that points one to another. So if I have like an order, order has like customer ID and the customer ID is basically a foreign key to the ID of another table. The, the advantages of that concept is pretty easy. Like the, the entire uh, data is being saved only once and has references. All oh, right, but but I do see some problems. We, we don't we don't have we don't have duplicates, um, and it's really easy to think in the form of tables, um, and it's really easy to maintain data when when you have everything since. Yeah, it's really easy. But like, it's a hassle. If, yeah, if a customer, for example, changes an email, then it's reflected immediately. No pro no problems, right? Yeah. I think I think I think when you think when you think about it, so. It's like there was the era in software engineering when everybody used to do ORMs, right? ORMs, but there's like these frameworks <laughs> of doing object to relational, and you are constantly being like um, tired of thinking about your code as objects and your database as tables. So it's like you have circles in one place and squares in another place, right? And then you are constantly messing with with mapping them. And this was because the rise of I think document based databases, because developers says like I thinking in JSON, let me put JSON in my database, but it's not all. Fun and games, right? Because when you say when you're saving things in tables with relations, the old school way, it's really easy to maintain the data. The database might might actually do it for you. Yeah. So if I'm deleted, the, if I'm deleted the customer, it's really e it's really easy to actually cascade the changes to orders or vice versa, right? It's really easy because you just save it in one place. So the maintenance of the data is really really easy when something changes. Yeah. On the other hand, if I get a requirement like we said before that I want to search the order database by customer name. Then I, then I can't really do this. Yeah, because I, you usually have only like an order and it has only like the customer ID. Okay, so, right? so great. We actually said it, uh, said it earlier that I want to materialize, meaning I want to take some of the, yeah. of the customer and put them under the order, which is basically denormalization. Yeah. And this, so, this, this sounds, this, so, so this this sounds is really the, great. So this is the thing. This is why I used to tell all the time to my developers. It's not normal to always normalize. You need to think when you want to normalize, right? So no, no doubt that none of this approach like wins. But the, the advantages of denormalizing, it's like, a lot of you know this paradigm of like uh, embedded documents. When you have like a nested document, which model the entire data. So if I have like a product, I have all the fields, and then I have a nested collection which says like categories, right? And then I see everything in one document instead of dividing it across collection or tables or whatever, right? So it's it's much faster to get development rapidly and get things started fast. So when you users developers started to use non-SQL uh, non-SQL uh, System, they're saying like, oh, I'm developing like 10 times more, but then well, after like half a year or two years into development, they, they see that it has problems. I think you had it in catalog. Once you have to maintain a, a changing category and you have like a catalog full of uh, products, maybe you can elaborate on that. All right. So one of the requirements in, in the products catalog was that you want to be able to sort of tag product with categories. No. Okay, so you like have products made in Israel or clothing or shoes. Exactly. Okay, okay so uh, one entity is the one we already talked about. This is the product, and the other and the other one is this collection. They have, let's say, a name or something, for the sake of speaking. And I I, I want to know which products are in each categories and uh, for each category which product it contains. Okay. So if you think about the normalized form, then it, it's fairly simple: product, collection, and a junction table. Product, product ID, collection ID. And yeah, junction table for those not familiar is basically a table which maintain uh, many to many relations. Like exactly. imagine like you have this product and category, product category. So it's basically maintaining many to many connection between product and category. Great. Okay. So some things work really well. For example, let's say that the data is already in the database and you modify something, you rename a category. Let's say I remove a product from a category, you just yeah. delete a record from the exactly. junction table and you're done. Yeah, but even if I rename a category and it's included in a thousand of products, it's still one change. One place in the database. But the, it's, the big, it's the highest beneficial stuff you can get from a normalizing. Exactly. This is the gain, right? Yeah, so this is amazing. On the, on the other end, sometimes I would need to use transactions yeah. and and th uh, uh, this is a little like a li little heavy. 
Um, so it's really easy to maintain it, but still, I think developers are only constantly being afraid of RDBMS because they think about their code as objects, right? If you look at their code, they have product, and within product, they have like a collection of categories, and that's how they look about the domain. But eventually, this domain, which is like a product and a nested collection, it's basically three tables on SQL, right? Yeah. Um, so let's say I want to go to go down the denormalized route. Okay, so, elaborate about what is the normalized route. So, so we, let's talk about the same domain, product and category. Exactly. So instead of product having, instead of product collection in another table, okay. I, would, I would make it so much simpler. I would have a product, and this product would have an array of collections. Now let's a in, array of collections. Oh, yeah, okay. array of collections. With so you have like a product and, and a field name categories, and the category is a collection of categories. Yes, and they probably. So, need so it's basically just like the object in the code. If I'm taking the object from the code, serialize it to JSON, like you can basically just save it. Yeah, I, I would probably want to have an ID for this collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For so sure. I, 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 but let's let's understand why in a second. Uh, and it is simpler in a way. Now I had three tables. Now I have one table. One collection. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, this seems so much And it's simpler. exactly just like my code. I don't, not, I'm not. I don't have any code that converts the, the data from the tables to an object. I'm yeah, using also, that code. You know, adding a collection. This is. Uh, so much easier, but uh, edit, a edit, edit a product edit collection is, is really simple. But then, but, but wait, if it's that simple, I think that when I was a new starter and I thought about it, and I, and I remember new, uh, no SQL databases got to the scene, so I think about like 95% of my job is actually to convert the squares from the SQL to the circles in my code because I have three tables and I have one object, then I do I have to do the cascading mm -hmm. the code and all the stuff, and then they show me like JSON based databases, and I said, like. This is everything I dreamt of. It's like I just can serialize my object. Okay, and save but wait. It. So wait. what is what is the disadvantage? Like so, please so, share with us the disadvantage. So, so first, the, it's more space. Now you might not care, but space is money. Definitely. But I had a boss also, which told me like uh, thinking about storage is like things we used to do in the nineties. <laughs> it does cost money, but yeah. but but you're right. But then some things that should be simple are not really but simple. By the way, why is it more space? Just to, to our viewers to understand, why do you say like it's more space if I'm doing the de denormalized way? Because previously, I, uh, if you think about a collection, I had an ID and it referenced uh, an entity in another table, and then the name appeared only once. Oh, right. Yeah. But, like, for the sake of speaking, let's say I have one thousand products pointing to the same collection, then, same category. Yeah, to the same uh, same category. Sorry. Then instead of having the name of the category once in the database, I now have it one thousand times. If so, you're doing denormalized. If I'm doing denormalized. In yes. denormalized, but you have only one. Exactly. So yeah, definitely more so, storage. So it is more it is more storage. Now, what if I want to rename the, this category? Let's say category from clothing to special clothing. Yes. Okay. So previously I would only do one change. Now I had to do now I have to do basically one thousand, maybe unlimited amount of what changes. What do you mean? So you mean you have to essentially change every doc every product that is below, that, as that is associated with that category. Yeah, I would have I would have oh. to find all of them and change it. Uh, maybe it will also become like engineering wise, it might become an asynchronous action because I might have yeah. Many, but you many don't products. you don't want to get the user if the user updates the category and the category affects like I don't know like ten thousand documents, so you don't want him to leave them hang there, right? Yes, yeah, so I'm I'm not saying it's bad. I think that you need to dis to to think well when you want to normalize and when you don't want to normalize. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. So out of your experience, like. Obviously, denormalization is a much faster development, at least at the start. Um, less mapping code, don't need like this, even ORMs and all this kind of stuff. Um, but as you said, it's costly because of storage and it's costly because sometimes maintenance operation costs more. Let's say even if I delete a category. If yeah. I delete a category, I need to go across all the products I have and, and dereference it, unless I'm willing to keep like a stale pointers to dead categories or something. So I think, I think it really depends. One of the question is, we said earlier whether category is a real domain, and that kind of kind of affects it whether you want to split it out or not. Okay, pl please share more. I mean, we talked about earlier. I mean, does it have life on its own? No, but usually when something has a real crud, in this case, like I can create a category, create create a category, delete, yeah, and rename it, it starts to feel like its own domain. Yeah, so it's kind of mistake because it feels like category. Can you can create a category without any product, right? Yeah. So it feels kind of that it has life on its own. Yeah, I, I think I, I think it does. And I, in my opinion, it is a, it is a domain, and then I would not uh, denormalize it. But it mm. doesn't mean that I. It doesn't denormalize. So even if you choose like a non-SQL database, 
you will have two collections, one for yes. co for a category and one for a product, and you can recreate like an artificial join or something, right? Yeah, uh, so, so first, I might do mat materialization, as we said earlier. Even though mm -hmm. I split them out, I might want to take some of the properties and, and copy them to the other one. Yeah. Obviously, if I copy property, it means that I have to maintain it. But they have the right to, to exist by their own. I mean, yes. Category can exist before I have products in my store. Yeah, I mean, let's take like the, 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 most, the, the, the most simple case. I would need to filter by category IDs. I would need to get product for clothing. Ah, so you're saying like if you're going to denormalize it and you want to filter by category, it can be really expensive search. Yeah, so I, I, I think I would probably do the products and collections separately, but I would maintain the list of collection IDs uh, on the product. Yeah. So, so now, it's basically like a this, foreign key. Yeah, and some and this, is almost, this is almost normalization. Yeah, it's almost, it feels like an artificial joint. So we cannot denormalize and solve all of our problems. I remember yeah. when the, this document database went on, people think like it's, it's the secret ingredient that they haven't, didn't know. Um, so, but in, in, in the essence, so you're saying like what makes you think about ever choosing between normalized and non-normalized is like if, can you give me a, a one example that denormalization was the, the good call? One example maybe could be uh, product reviews. Okay. I mean, they don't really have any meaning without It product. sounds like one too many, right? Like one yeah. product has multiple reviews. Okay. Yeah, and... And review cannot exist without a product, right? Yeah, I guess ma mainly because... Yeah, and also you cannot... One review always applies to one product and not many, so yeah, multiple. Yeah, yeah. So all these problems with cascading the leads kind of go away. Yeah. And I don't need to query reviews without the product. I'm always saying like get the review for a given product, right? So it doesn't feel like a, it feels more like a value than an entity, unless, and not like a category. Yeah, right. I, I think this is a good example. I, I think this is like the, the, the good rule of thumb is like whether it can live without the main entity. Category needs to be separated because it has a meaning, it has a crud, it has everything. And, and reviews are like basically, I cannot put a review without associating the product. You cannot live without the product. So this is like basically what I'm doing also when I'm, I'm, uh, designing. And, and of course with, one to, before we close the, the session, like when you talk about uh, data design, so a lot of times we do work a lot with messaging. We, it's, it's, needless, it's needless to say we work a lot with messaging because sometimes the database is not enough and we need some analytical places like Elasticsearch or Solar or anything like that. But I think it's like a case for like another conversation, but it, it's a lot of way to look at the same data. So, okay, that's it for today. Thank you, Oded. Thank you, Avi. And you are more than welcome to leave us any question or remarks here below. Thank you and see you next time.